The following is a short clip from a debate between atheist Matt Dillahunty and Christian Tyler Vila on the topic of is there good evidence for God? I'll put a link to the full debate in the description below. And so if there's a God that can demonstrably provide evidence of its existence in nature in such a way that I would no longer be able to say, hey, how do I know this isn't aliens or how do I know I'm not delusional? Um, then that is something that should have happened. Now, atheists like Matt are not the only ones that are asking this question. I think it's a good question, and many thinking Christians have asked the same thing. If God is real, then why doesn't he just come down and reveal himself to everyone? I believe that the answer is complex and multifaceted, and we probably won't fully understand it this side of heaven. But don't let that discourage you from giving it some thought. Now, I've given it quite a bit of thought, and I've come up with what I believe to be an important component of the answer. It's not going to solve all of the problems or answer all of the questions, but I believe it will go a long way in helping us understand why God sometimes seems to hide. My name is Cole and you're watching Practical Faith. Stay tuned. If you're new to the channel and enjoy Christian teaching like this, then please consider subscribing. Before I give you my answer, which honestly is pretty simple, I need to lay out a few biblical points. And as I do that, I think some of you are probably going to pick up with where I'm headed with this. Number one, you are accountable for the revelation that you receive from God. According to Romans chapter one, we've all received sufficient revelation from God to believe in him. That is, we have the light of creation and we have the light of conscience. And so if we reject that light, we are without excuse. But many have received an even greater revelation from God. The greater the revelation that someone receives, the greater the punishment will be for rejecting that revelation. And that is a really important point to my view here. Satan and his fallen angels don't seem to have had any opportunity to repent according to the scripture. There doesn't seem to be a plan of redemption for them. Why is that? I believe that that's most likely because they were in the very presence of God. They're witnessing his glory. They're standing by and watching as he's creating the universe out of nothing. And so when they reject him and they rebel, they fully know what they are doing. And so there's no opportunity for repentance. In Luke chapter 12, verse 47, it reads, And that servant which knew his Lord's will and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that knew not and did commit things worthy of stripes shall be beaten with few stripes. So in this passage, the degree of punishment was directly connected to the degree of knowledge. In Matthew chapter 11, Jesus is rebuking those who refuse to respond to his message. He says, But I tell you that it will be more tolerable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom than for you. And then Jesus continues this line of thought into Matthew 12, verse 41. He says, The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonas, and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. So Israel here is going to receive a greater condemnation because they have a greater revelation through the person of Jesus Christ. Another example is 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 20 which appears to describe a believer. It says, For if after they have escaped the defilements of the world through the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are entangled again in them and overcome, the last state has become worse for them than the first. And it's worse for them because they have had a greater knowledge of God and they've rejected him. And then one more quickly is in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 4. It says, For it is impossible in the case of those who have once been enlightened, they've tasted the heavenly gift, they share of the Holy Spirit, they've tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come. So they've definitely had a revelation from God. It's impossible for them. Then if they fall away to restore them again unto repentance, since they are crucifying once again the Son of God to their own harm and holding him up to contempt. Now, there are a lot of other examples that I can pull from scripture, but for the sake of time, I think that's enough, and I think you get the idea. My second major point is that a greater knowledge of God does not ensure that you will follow him. In fact, there are many people in the Bible who had a sure knowledge of God and still rejected him. My first example with Satan and his angels seems to prove this. I mean, no one can argue that they weren't in the presence of God, witnessing his power and his glory, and yet still, most scholars would say that a third of the angels fell. 
Adam walked with God in the cool of the day, and yet he still disobeyed. The children of Israel countless times disobeyed God, even as they were being led in the daytime by a pillar of cloud and in the nighttime by a pillar of fire. Judas was part of the inner circle with the 12 disciples and he betrayed Christ. For the last example, we go to the book of Revelation where the wicked are blaspheming God. Now they fully know who he is, right? They recognize his power, they've seen his miracles, and yet instead of repenting and turning to God, they are blaspheming and working against God. Some people like Matt Dillahunty have adopted a worldview that doesn't seem to allow for the possibility of there being a God. Tyler Vila asked him something to the effect of, if God was to realign the stars and spell out the words, hey Matt, I'm here, this is Yahweh, then would that be evidence that would prove the existence of God? And he said, well, yeah, that would be a start basically, or it would be evidence, but it wouldn't prove God's existence because maybe it's aliens or maybe it's his own mind playing tricks on him or something like that. So there really isn't anything that for Matt and people like him that would prove the existence of God. But even if Matt found that thing that convinced him that Christianity was true, that does not mean that he would follow Christ. In fact, I used to be part of an atheist versus religion group on Facebook, and I posted this poll. I asked this question. If you became convinced that Christianity was true, would you repent of your sins and follow Jesus? 24 people said, yes, I would follow Jesus. And that shows me that those people are after truth. They will go wherever they believe the truth leads them. 15 said, I'm not sure if I would or not. 153 people said, no, even if I knew that Christianity was true, I still would not become a Christian. That's almost 80% of atheists, even if they knew it was true, they would not follow Christ. So getting back to the question and the purpose of this video, why does God hide? I really believe that one of the reasons why God seems to hide is because God is incredibly merciful. Now, how does that make sense? If he's merciful, wouldn't he want to come down and reveal himself to everyone? Not if revealing himself to everyone would cause a majority of the people that receive that revelation to endure a greater condemnation because of it. Now, what would that condemnation look like? We really don't know. It might be the inability to repent. It might be a greater torment in hell, but we could be sure that whatever it is, it would be far worse than they would otherwise receive. So it is a logical deduction from scripture that if God did not seem to hide, then a lot of people would suffer a greater condemnation for refusing to follow him. I know my view is not all encompassing. It may actually open up more questions than it answers. Uh, but if you have a question, then feel free to put it into the comment section down below and maybe we can continue this discussion. If there are enough questions, I may do another video on this topic. If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And until next time, thanks for watching.